guys, it's Lana again. I know this is a plant channel, but today I thought I would talk to you about praying mantises because I also have some praying mantises that I keep and I think they're really interesting. They're also really helpful in gardens outside. I wouldn't recommend releasing them onto your indoor plants uh, just because maybe you don't want them everywhere, but uh, they're really interesting animals and I like them. So. This year in my class, the classroom that I supported, one of the classrooms that I supported this year as a teacher, um, we ordered insects. In two of the, the other two classrooms, we ordered butterfly, uh, we ordered caterpillars and watched them turn into butterflies. But in one of the classes, we ordered um, an Ootheca, which is a, an egg sac of a praying mantis. This is of a Chinese praying mantis and it never hatched. So I also found this one. You can see this is an Ootheca of a, a Carolina mantis, which is native, <clears throat> or at least has become native to Missouri. So I found this outside, this one was ordered. Neither of them hatched. I kept them inside this enclosure from insect lore and waited and waited and sprayed the enclosure occasionally with water to keep it, keep the humidity high, never worked. But a couple of weeks ago, my daughter captured two praying mantis nymphs. <clears throat> I'm not sure if you can see them from a bush just outside our front door. So we decided to keep them. She actually captured two more the next day, but we only decided to keep two. There's one. You can see him. They're very small and they have molted once so far. So they're a little bit bigger than they were when we got them. But these guys are really fun. Right now I have these nymphs in a, an enclosure, a plastic enclosure. It's actually a food container from the grocery store. Um, and I've poked little holes in the top for air. But the reason I have them in, in this enclosure is not because they are small enough to escape the mesh enclosure, they seem pretty small, but their legs um, make them too big to get out through the mesh, so they would be fine. However, their food could easily escape because what I'm feeding them are tiny, flightless um, fruit flies. So they're fruit flies and they have wings, but they have been bred to be unable to fly. There's a little guy right there. He's looking at us, posing for the camera. These are the flightless fruit flies. And you buy them in a culture jar. And that just means that there is food at the bottom of the jar for the fruit flies. And a lot of the flies in the jar are actually still in larval form. So you'll have some flies now and then the larva will uh, become flies, and there may even be some eggs in there, and so then they're a larva while you've got another fly. So you get several rounds of fruit flies out of this one jar. Um, the jar has mesh in the top for air, and it smells kind of gross. Uh, so these are teeny tiny, and they will definitely escape from the mesh. So since I don't want fruit flies all over my house, I keep the nymphs in here until they're big enough to eat larger prey. There's, they're a lot of fun to watch. I really like the way they move and watching them eat is especially fun. They stand really still when they're ready to eat and wait for one of the fruit flies to get close to them and then they just reach out and snap it up and then bite its head off. So that's kind of fun to watch. Uh, I bought these at a pet store. I don't remember if it was Petco or PetSmart or Pet something. Uh, just almost any pet store that sells um, supplies for lizards and turtles and uh, pets like that will have flightless fruit flies that you can buy for your praying mantis. And then once your praying mantis is big enough to eat bigger prey, then you will transfer them, or I'll transfer them, mine, into here, this little mesh container, 
and feed them crickets or beetles, probably crickets because those are the easiest ones to buy at the pet store. Praying mantises don't need a whole lot of care, but they do need food and water, of course. So like I said, here's their food, and this is how I feed them. First, I have to make sure they are not too close to the top when I open it because I don't want to accidentally squish them. They are tiny little escape artists, always trying to get out through the edge of the lid. So I open this first because they move a little bit more slowly than the fruit flies do. The fruit flies can't fly, but they can jump really far and really fast. And I try not to get them all over my kitchen. Get down there. <laughs> He's trying to escape already. Okay, so I'm just going to open this quickly and then dump, shake a few flies into the enclosure and then put the lid on so that they can't escape. So I tap this, I tap that so that they're down at the bottom and they don't jump out. And I shake it until a few of them fall in, put the lid on, put make sure my mantises are out of the way, put this lid on. Okay, that's how I feed them. And they're pretty excited about it right now. But I also need to give them water. So every day I open the enclosure for just a moment, take my little water sprayer and spray a few pumps of water, not onto the mantises, but just onto the inside surface of the enclosure or onto the little branch that's in the enclosure. And I do that because mantises get their water from little droplets that are on the surface of things. That's what they drink from. So that's plenty of water for these guys. And then we've got lots of little fruit flies in there, so maybe we can watch our mantises eat. Okay, I tried to get a good angle before this mantis grabbed a fruit fly, but I was too late. He has already started eating. You can see a lot of fruit flies go up to the top. Oh, and he's already grabbed his. Oh, he jumped down. He already grabbed his fly and started eating it. Let's see if I can find him again. Here's one uh, at the bottom. I can't tell if that's the one. Yes, he is eating. You can see his mouth moving and he's holding it up. He's holding up the fruit fly to his face. I'm sorry, it won't focus on the mantis because of the water droplets on the plastic. This is hard to capture on video, partly because he's so tiny and the fruit fly is also so tiny, but also with the water on the surface, it won't focus. But that is the praying mantis eating. They first bite off the head of their prey and then systematically eat every part. They leave no extra pieces behind. They are not wasteful bugs. Here he is. This is one of my little friends. The other one right now is on the edge of this enclosure. They're easy to hold. They don't, they can jump, but they, I hold them. <clears throat> I hold them for short periods of time now that they've molted and their um, bodies are a little harder. But when they were nymphs, when they were brand new, um, I wouldn't really hold them. Thanks for watching my short little video about praying mantises. And I hope you consider keeping some as pets or maybe just raising some to release in your garden and eat your aphids and mites and other nuisance bugs. Like and subscribe at the bottom and I will put a transcript for this video in the description.